voice says what everyone else is thinking. I'm dedicated to it. I can't be stopped. <laughs> Ballistic music. My life is measured in Richter scale and ballistics because I'm sight. I sighted in all my guitars to be dead on at 200 yards. My name is Ted Nugent. This is the real America's voice, the defiant zone, the piss and vinegar epicenter of critical thinking and suspicious of all authority because I'm an independent soul. I'm not German. I'm not French. I'm sure not a limey. You know, if you want to play Concord Bridge, you can be the Limeys, I'll be the Patriots. We'll just meet you and shoot you in the face if you come to take our guns. Well, violence is never the answer, Ted. Well, here's an idea. You Pearl Harbor me, I Nagasaki you. I think violence is an appropriate emotion. I think hate is an appropriate emotion. It's a shame we have to call upon those negativities, but in a world where the people with all the power want to kick down our door and take our guns, and everything about the Second Amendment right now is infringed. That's why I, Ted Nugent, have been a flame-throwing A-10 warthog of self-evident truth, logic, and common sense for at least the last 60-some years. I'll be 76. I certainly started when I was like 15 or 16 when the hippies would attack me because I eat venison, which is perfect. I kill innocent deer, which is called barbecue, and I carry a gun because my life is not just my constitutional authority to protect my life, but it's a moral, spiritual, and intellectual obligation. We have a moral, spiritual, and intellectual obligation, hell-raising commando for the Second Amendment as we promote gun owners of America, gunowners.org. It is the fist. It is the meaningful, efficient counterpunch against the Uncle Sam gangsters who want to disarm us so we're more easily controlled. Eric Pratt, you know how much I love you, don't you? Eric Pratt represents Gun Owners of America, and I represent Gun Owners of America, not just the organization, but the very literal concept of Americans who own guns. Eric, I love you. The flames coming out of your ass for freedom almost match mine. You are a great man. Thank you for coming on the Spirit Campfire. That's quite an introduction. We love you back, Ted. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> Is that what that was, an introduction? I'm on a stream of consciousness. You know, Eric, we became friends years ago because we saw that every gun law, every gun regulation is illegal. It says shall not be infringed. Right. I just have celebrated a brass rainbow this morning with my MP5. I got the Michigan State Troopers coming down to work on my machine guns. And I like to aim small, miss small. It's fun. Plus, I have a duty to respect to uh, protect my family. But gun owners of America, tell us the latest, because you guys don't just take money and pay yourselves. You literally fight those who infringe. And right now, the infringement assault has never been more toxic. Tell us what gun owners of America are doing right now and why everybody who believes in freedom and self-defense should be a member of gun owners of America. Yeah, a lot of great stuff going on. A couple huge updates from this week. I'll start with uh, the one earlier and then get to the one that just happened today. Uh, but on Tuesday, we got a preliminary injunction against Biden's universal background check rule, which of course is all about registration. Ted, you know, the Biden administration has been trying to weaponize the ATF to bypass Congress and enact gun control legislation. And of course, their latest attempt was this universal background registration rule, basically requiring virtually every uh, seller and buyer uh, to go through background checks, 4473 forms. Well, a federal judge in Texas has smacked them down, granting GOA and our members a preliminary injunction which prevents the ATF from enforcing the rule. Now, for now, this preliminary injunction only applies to GOA members and residents of five states. Now, we're fighting to get this expanded to all gun owners all across the country. But, you know, we, we take what we can get. That's what uh, the judge gave us. So that's on the one hand, that's a, a huge victory uh, because now it's going to be very difficult for the ATF to enforce that rule. Like, like I was saying, virtually every person who sells even a privately owned gun to become a gun dealer uh, would have to 
uh, go go through these steps before selling a firearm. And, and the rule would require virtually every person who buys a gun even from a neighbor to fill out a 4473 form. So obviously this was all about gun owner registration. And then there's the big news from today, Ted, and, and you may have heard this, but the Supreme Court just handed down an opinion on the bump stock case. You were talking about machine guns earlier. The Supreme Court has said a bump stock, a piece of plastic is not a machine gun. I mean, you know, even a five-year-old could figure that out, right? Uh, but that's been exciting because we've been involved in this case from ground zero. In fact, we started in Michigan. I know a state that's uh, near and dear to your heart. Our case in Michigan was the first one where a judge in this country said, hey, a bump stock is uh, not a machine gun. Now, that judge was eventually overruled. Uh, our case helped create a, a circuit split. And so thank God for this case. Thank God for Justice Clarence Thomas, who delivered the opinion, fantastic opinion, said the ATF has gone way beyond, has exceeded their authority, uh, like, duh. Like, don't, don't we know that? Uh, this is what we've been fighting for several years now, and it's good to finally see the fruits of these efforts come in where judges are smacking down ATF for their overreaches. Well, Eric, God bless you, because I know it's a full-time job. I mean, I get up early. I probably look blathered and schnookered and completely worn out because I'm a hard-working son of a <laughs> I get up early, and I do my chores, and I train my dogs. My little puppy, Jackson, is coming on strong to take the place of Happy Jackson, who we lost a couple months ago, a very emotional, family-oriented consideration, dog lovers everywhere. But, you know, you talk about gun owners of America uh, are now— uh, uh, not not controlled by some of these ATF overreaches and in, in constitutional violating regulations. I've always said, Eric, and I'm an absolutist, the only gun rule that you need is you never point the weapon towards anything you're not willing to destroy. Right. And in a world of engineered recidivism, if we just didn't keep letting out rapists and carjackers yes. and stabbers and shooters and gangbangers and child sex traffickers and home invaders, that's the violent crime that <clears throat> Uncle Sam is engineering. If we got rid of them, then there wouldn't need to be any regulations on guns because only the good people would have them. And if you're unarmed and helpless, you're, the, Uncle Sam wants you dead or raped or carjacked. So it's an ongoing battle, and we're getting our Second Amendment rights back incrementally the same way we lost them incrementally. Yes. And, and, and I, I've always parroted, you've watched me for my entire life. I have the right to carry a gun wherever I may roam on planet Earth without any paperwork. It's from God. When did all this infringement explode? It happened right after Concord Bridge, I think. But after World War I and World War II, why should every freedom lover and every gun-owning family in America be a member of Gun Owners of America? I really think you're the number one fist in the fight for gun rights. Well, we, we are on, on the, the ground floor. Uh, Ted, we are in the Congress fighting for our rights. We're uh, fighting for our rights all across the country, and we have a slew of lawsuits all around the country. Uh, and I tell you what, Bruin, the Bruin case, the Supreme Court yeah. case has been a game changer. We are winning so many battles in the courts now. Mind you, it's expensive to fight these battles. And, yeah. you know, Joe Biden has, you know, sadly, uh, he, you know, he thinks like a dictator because he issues these gun control decrees uh, by, you know, the, with a pen and paper bypassing Congress, which is the way laws are supposed to be passed. But he knows that he can't get those laws passed in Congress. So he, he has his ATF write these decrees. And, you know, let's go back to that ATF rule. Uh, you know, you were just talking about how, you know, the Democrats, the anti-gun Democrats, coddle the criminals, and they go after the good people. I mean, think about how they're shutting down gun stores, gun shops for mere paperwork errors. Think about mm -hmm. how they went after Brian Malinowski, an airport administrator in Arkansas who sold yep, several guns from his private collection. And even before this ATF rule went into effect, 
okay, that was going to require uh, private sellers to uh, become, uh, you know, to, to, to get an FFL and become a gun dealer. Even before that rule went into effect, the ATF stormed Brian's home this past March, and I'm sure you're familiar with this story. It was a pre-dawn raid, gunned him down. Look, buying and selling guns should not be a death sentence. This is something that's been legal to do for over 200 years. It's protected by the Constitution. As you said, it is a right that we have from God. And that's why GOA will continue to fight uh, the Biden administration, the ATF's tyrannical rules in the courts and in the Congress. Well, you know, I've always been a big mouth. I think the founding fathers wanted everybody to be just like Ted Nugent, to be suspicious of authority because we come from tyrants and kings and emperors. Tyrants and kings and emperors are bad people because they're c controlling uh, individual lives. So here in America, we are experimenting self-government. You know, I'm, I'm a life member of the NRA. I donate to the Second Amendment Foundation. I'm proud to represent gun owners of America. There's a new organization, Texas Gun Rights. I'm a member of uh, the Michigan Gun Owners Organization. But everybody should go to gunowners.org. And all my friends out there that have a little extra cash, a donation to fight the devils of overreach and constitutional oath violator as Uncle Sam, the entire Uncle Sam gang violates the constitutional oath every day. Eric, I'm going to wrap this segment up. Thank you for what you do. Tell everybody back at Gun Owners how much Ted Nugent appreciates, reveres, and thanks them for their hard work because they put us in the crosshairs. We'll do it. And Ted, I hope to see you at our Goals National Convention in Knoxville, Tennessee in August. Uh, open invitation for everybody listening to come. You can go to our website. Uh, to, it's uh, open and free for all GOA members. Well, it's going to be a great, great event. And thank you, Eric. God bless Godspeed. God bless real freedom. And this is why this is the real America's voice, because there are some self-evident truths that are given to us by God, and we don't need some man to give us a permit for it. So gunowners.org, we're going to promote that nonstop. I'll be right back with more truth, logic, and common sense, because that's what I'm addicted to.